Whether or not you choose to carry it for your personal protection, you should know the effects of OC spray and how to fight through it. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of Newbold targets. Newbold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us out of Silver Spring, Maryland in the United States, and it shows a couple of store employees who are attacked by several shoplifters. If you go read the news story in the description on this one, you'll see the man wearing the tie and the shirt is a 74 year old manager and the lady in the kind of pastel shirt is 59 years old and they're trying to stop these three shoplifters who are trying to steal wigs out of this store and they decide, nope, they're not going to let them steal the wigs out of this store and you can see the guy in the green shirt starts to get violent and they want out of the store and these employees are not willing to do that and again, I want to point out that the store manager, 74 years old, now you see the, that guy, he actually pulled a pepper spray and pepper sprayed the manager, but the manager's absolutely not having it. Now, two of the shoplifters got out with one wig. Now, they're trying to get this other guy out of there, but again, the manager's not having it, pepper spray or not, and now it's a brawl, and you can see this guy, I don't know if he fought some gold gloves or something when he was enlisted or something, but he's just not having it with this guy and squares up on him, no problem. Now, of course, the other employee is trying to keep these other two out as well. Man, it's just a, a crazy kind of a, you know, fight club kind of night here where, where the guy ends up going back and now the fight is on some more. And, and I'm asking the questions, what are they hoping to get out of this? Are they going to try to detain him until police arrive or whatever? Going to go back and hit him a couple of more times, but he's finally going to get out of there. But he's not quite done yet. He's going to come back, open the door again, kick a couple of more times to get one of the wigs on the floor. They're still looking for him as far as I know, and the employees were treated for minor injuries. I have been exposed to OC spray several times. It is not fun. I would not do it again by choice. Got a poll question for you out of this one as well. Have you ever taken an OC exposure, whether in training or in real life? Hit the poll, let me know what you think. I have several times, it's miserable every time, especially when you're using the right stuff. Out of today's video, I wanna think, first of all, about the smarts of stopping a shoplifter and whether or not that is a wise idea. Number two, I wanna think about the importance of empty-handed skills. Number three, about working against multiple attackers. So I first wanna think about whether this was a good idea. And I, and I really think at the end of the day, the answer is no. Those wigs, even if you're the store owner, for gracious sakes, if I said, hey, for a couple hundred dollars, are you going to get into a fight? I'm gonna just about guarantee you that their hospital bill from being looked at after this encounter was more than the couple hundred dollars worth of wigs that they spent. So purely from an economic perspective, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to have fist fights with shoplifters. Now, I get the moral outrage of that. And you say, look, you gotta do something to stop them. And it is morally acceptable as well as legally acceptable in most cases to use physical force to stop somebody from stealing from you. But you gotta recognize the situation you're in. You got multiple people here. You got multiple attackers. You're an older person. You got another employee that's older as well. And the physical altercation is hugely problematic. So you may choose not to do that. Now, the physical altercation has started here. So this woman, again, 59 years old in the pastel shirt, who's just been kicked by the guy in the green shirt, you better have some empty-handed skills to, to deal with that and or force multipliers. Now, again, for the most part, that's an assault, not an aggravated assault, unless she's particularly fragile for some reason. So a gun is probably not the best solution here at this point. However, something like a pepper spray might be if you had a good one. Now, we know that the bad guy actually has one on him. That's pretty significant. But having some skills and having tools, incredibly important in these kinds of instances, because you might have been able to cool this one down. Now the bad guy gets his pepper spray out and uses it here. You can see him up like this. I don't know what kind of pepper spray it was. He certainly is employing it wrong, which I am grateful for that. But even if you don't carry a pepper spray, I would strongly recommend that you know the effects of pepper spray and you know what it actually does versus what you might have read on the internet about what it does and how to fight through it. The chief ingredient in pepper spray is fear. It's painful. It will close your eyes up, but you can fight through it. I have done it myself. It's not any fun one whatsoever, but it can be done. Now then, as this one continues on, I do want to say that the 74-year-old manager, dude does not mind throwing some hands, and he's definitely got incredible emotional fitness that having been pepper sprayed, punched, 
kicked, ganged up on by multiple people, dude has his head in the game. And that's probably the biggest thing is having an attitude that you say, I'm not willing to be a victim and being willing to stay in the fight. You know, you take a punch, somebody hurts you, they throw you out of the way, you got other stuff to deal with, but you stay in it. And having that kind of emotional fitness really cannot be replaced. You can have all the skills in the world, all the tools on you in the world and a great plan, but if you don't have an attitude that backs that up, you will not succeed in a self-defense encounter. Now, again, I think at some point you gotta learn when to shut it off and say, okay, I'm just gonna let this guy go so that we're not having more of a fight. But I really admire his heart, his tenacity, his emotional fitness. Now, again, at the end of things, the, the hospital bills and all that stuff and the, the wrecked uh, merchandise is probably worth a whole lot more than what they stopped them from. But I get the moral outrage of not wanting somebody to steal from you. Let's make sure that we have our plan in place, that we know what we're willing to fight for and when, that we have the skill set to back it up, significant empty-handed skills, the attitude as well, great emotional fitness to cover our ASP.